All right. All right. So thank God again. Uh, thank you for your patience uh, as we uh, seek to continue to, to study our word together uh, in various locations. We're grateful uh, for technology and grateful for uh, the support we have uh, to even uh, get beyond uh, some technical difficulties. So I'm grateful tonight um, that I, I've got uh, one of our media team members right in my house. Uh, she, she lives here and allows me to live here. So I'm grateful, uh, grateful that she has figured it out, you all, my, my, my better half. So uh, really grateful, really grateful tonight. So uh, look, um, you know, God, God is, uh, God, God is good. God is good. So look, uh, look, tur turn with me. Yeah, tur turn with me to your Bibles. Um, look, we're, we're going to shift a little bit tonight. Um, I just, just felt the Lord heavy, uh, today and he's, he's kind of redirected me, uh, for the, uh, the sake of Bible study tonight. And so uh, I know we've been in the book of Acts and we continue to, uh, encourage you all, uh, to consider the, the book of Acts and specifically the church that we find in the book of Acts. And as we say over and over again, uh, because it's true, uh, the church um, uh, in the beginning is really the church at its best. And I just believe in by faith that God has really kind of taken us back uh, to the old landmark, so to speak. Uh, he has us in our homes. He's working on our hearts and he's allowing the gospel uh, to go viral again. Uh, and it starts with the people of God in their home. So uh, we are grateful, uh, grateful to be alive for such a time as this. And, um, you know, what a great time it is to be a Christian. Okay, so we won't won't be long tonight, but I do want to shift to 2 Corinthians, uh, Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. If we could go there tonight together, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 is where we want to land tonight uh, and spend some time together. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 4, chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So let's let's turn there tonight and uh, we'll, we'll spend uh, a good amount of time um, seeing what Paul has to say uh, to even us uh, during this time, this particular time uh, in this season in life in which we're facing uh, some challenges, some challenges, but God is able. So uh, let's, let's begin in prayer. God, we say uh, thank you. Uh, Lord, we thank you uh, for things being as well as they are. Uh, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Uh, we thank you for the mobility of our limbs. We thank you for the capacity of our minds. And God, we have come uh, to study your word. Your word is still a lamp unto our feet, and it's a light unto our path. And so God, we thank you for clarity uh, that comes from your word. We thank you for uh, peace that comes from knowing your word. And we thank you uh, for growth that happens from studying your word. So have your way tonight. Uh, God, do what you want to do as long as you want to do it. And God, we are open. Uh, we, are, we have open minds, open ears, open hearts uh, to receive a thing. Lord, I'm asking that you bless everyone that's on this call and also everyone that may be viewing us on uh, Facebook Live, on YouTube, or even our website. God, we thank you that although we, it seems like we're apart, uh, we're still close together. And so God, thank you for keeping uh, the church as it is, uh, stronger than ever. So Lord, uh, thank you for this privilege of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And if I could just uh, tag... Um, uh, a, a title to this lesson, I really want to call it uh, Treasure for Tough Times. Treasure for Tough Times is, is really what I want to call uh, this lesson um, as we hear uh, from our big brother in the faith, uh, the Apostle Paul. Uh, he's, he's really uh, letting us know uh, that no matter how bad things look or how bad things feel, or quite frankly, how bad things can get, uh, we have treasure uh, in tough times. Uh, that will help us uh, to overcome and to persevere. And so we're grateful uh, that our faith is well-founded uh, in the Lord. And so uh, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I pray uh, that you've gotten there uh, by now. Um, we're we're going to uh, take our time with this. So if you haven't gotten there, uh, be patient with yourself. This is Bible study. It's what it's all about. So 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. 
all right? And uh, we're just going to go over this and uh, just share what the Lord uh, has shared with me. Um, but here's the thing. One thing I do want to set up for you is possibly some historical context um, uh, for what we're studying tonight, uh, some historical context uh, for what we're studying tonight. Uh, for one, uh, it's interesting to note uh, that although uh, this is called or presented to us, even in our Bibles, as uh, 2 Corinthians, which would uh, denote the fact that uh, it is the second letter from the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth, uh, it's important to know that it is not, it is not his second letter, all right? It is important to know historically, it's actually not his second letter. Second Corinthians, although presented as Paul's second letter to Corinth, is actually more than likely at least his third letter uh, to Corinth, all right? And and there's Bible for that. If you're, if you're taking notes tonight, the reason why we know that is because uh, Paul alludes to this uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. That's right. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 shows us that 2 Corinthians uh, is, is not his second letter. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, uh, he alludes to another letter uh, that he has already written, had previously written uh, to the church at Corinth. Uh, so as a consequence, uh, what we know as his first letter uh, is not his first letter. And of course, what we know as his second letter is not his second letter, all right? And so he, he we know that under uh, from Paul's own volition that he says, I've already written to you. Uh, and what he wrote to them about uh, before all of this was he was writing to them about uh, making sure that they were not uh, following the teachings of immoral leadership, all right? Uh, Paul had a very uh, interesting, <laughs> interesting relationship when it came to the church uh at corinth all right very interesting dynamic and uh his historians agree uh that the apostle paul uh his missionary journey uh when he really was active when he was really going around sharing the gospel of jesus christ uh that those missionary years are uh from 47 a.d to 57 a.d all right so his, his, his missionary years uh, that we know of, that we uh, study, that we are so inspired by, uh, goes from 47 AD uh, to 57 AD, all right? And he spent much of his time uh, in Corinth. Um, uh, many, many scholars agree that he at least spent uh, from 50 AD to 57 AD, uh, coming and going and staying and and all of that serving and teaching, uh, but he spent a lot of time with this church. Uh, but this was this was a church, interesting enough, uh, that Pastor Paul started himself. He he was the one uh, that introduced the gospel of Jesus Christ, the uh, Evangelion, the good news uh, that we now have inside of our hearts uh, that gives us strength uh, as we move forward in this life. The the resurrection of Jesus Christ was first introduced to the church at Corinth by Paul. And so he, he has nurtured them uh, from, from being unsaved to coming into salvation, and he has also raised them up in the faith. Uh, but the interesting thing, out of all of his churches, it is the church of Corinth uh, that really gives Paul all that he could handle. I mean, it was tough. It was tough. He had his ups and his downs, more downs than ups uh, with this church at Corinth. Uh, they, they, just, uh, it's, 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 it, they just had a hard time uh, in most of his ministry uh, getting along. And, and most would agree a lot of this happened uh, in his absence, all right? Paul uh, was sharing the gospel uh, throughout the world, throughout the region, and uh, that caused for him to be absent. And when he was absent from the Corinth church, uh, as you know, uh, the devil is always busy. And so there were other leaders, pseudo uh, preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ that came up with their own uh, doctrine and theology and began teaching it uh, to the church of Corinth. Uh, on top of that, you got to realize where uh, the region in which Corinth is located, uh, it, is, it is very, uh, it is not what I would call 
a monotheistic, which means they believe one thing. No, it is it is uh, many faiths, many faiths uh, that are in that region. And so this is what Paul is up against. And it causes for some strain uh, in the relationship. But let me tell you something about the Apostle Paul. Despite how uh, difficult uh, his relationship was uh, with the church at Corinth, one thing I know for certain is that Paul loved Jesus Christ. And Paul, sure enough, loved that church in Corinth. He did. He loved them. Just like just like you would have uh, children or a relative that, that sometimes uh, acts out of bounds, um, he is still uh, truly committed uh, and love. He loves uh, this church at Corinth. And so uh, that's the dynamic of their relationship. And so as he writes uh, to them in 2 Corinthians, brothers and sisters, uh, he's writing to them in a time in which there is turmoil. Uh, but he writes, I love, I love how uh, he writes almost so poetically uh, in uh, chapter four of Second Corinthians. And uh, it's really where I uh, drew a lot of inspiration uh, even earlier today as I, I had to minister at a, a funeral. Um, just just these, these timeless words uh, to let us know that we have treasure, uh, that we've got treasure for tough times. Uh, I believe it's going to be encouraging to you. Uh, so if you look, um, if you look at the at verse one, we'll, we'll start there. And um, as we deal with treasure for tough times, as we hear from our big brother in the faith of uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, he starts off. And I, I'm just so you know, as we discussed, uh, I always encourage people for Bible study uh, to get a version of the Bible uh, that you are comfortable with and uh, that you can understand uh, it. it you know, and so for me, uh, that that book is something that uh, that version that I often use for study uh, was given to uh, me while I was in seminary uh, at, at Virginia Union. And uh, that is the NRSV. All right. The newly revised standard version. So if what I'm reading sounds a little different, uh, it's going to be close enough. Uh, I promise you that you'll understand. Paul says in chapter four, verse one, uh, therefore, uh, since it is by God's mercy uh, that we are engaged in this ministry, he says, we do not lose heart. Uh, we have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, uh, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing uh, in their case. The God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing a light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Uh, for we do not proclaim ourselves. He says we proclaim uh, Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as uh, your slaves for Jesus' sake. Uh, for it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. All right. So that's that's verses four, uh, verse uh, chapter four, verse one through six. All right. And so Paul, uh, if I if I can outline what we just read, uh, Paul is giving to us a proper perspective on preaching and ministry. That's what he's given to us in verse one through six of chapter four. If you're taking notes. Paul gives to us a proper perspective on preaching and ministry. Brothers and sisters, he lets us know why we are involved in this thing called preaching and why we are involved as believers in this thing called ministry. He lets us know, look, I'm not in it for fame. I'm not in it for fortune. I'm not in it to bring attention to myself, to make people think I'm higher or more uh, than I am. But Paul says simply, he says, the reason why I am sticking with the faith, the reason why I am staying committed to Jesus Christ, his cross and the church, he says it clearly. He says, we preach not ourselves. No, we're not preaching Paul. We're not preaching any other name, but we're preaching Jesus Christ. He says, uh, we preach not ourselves but we proclaim Jesus Christ and watch this. He calls himself uh, a slave for Jesus sake. Yeah, 
a slave for Jesus sake. And man, that's, that is amazing for me because as you know, the apostle Paul is one of the most educated writers that we come across uh, in the book of the Bible. And so look, as educated as he is, although he is set at the feet of, of, of Gamaliel, and although he has uh, studied uh, uh, the books and understands, he's, he's multilingual, he, he understands a whole lot of things, but one thing Paul will not do, he will not put himself before Christ, and he will not put himself before the church. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying, look, the reason why we are in this faith, the reason why we are in this fight, the reason why I am committed to Christ and the church is because I know that Jesus Christ ultimately is the best thing that has ever happened to me. And brothers and sisters, that is a message that ought to go to the masses, that it's not about who we are, but it's about turning humankind's attention unto a God that sits high and looks low, a God that will always look out for them, a God that deserves our devotion, deserves our obedience, and deserves our commitment. It is not about us, but it's about the Lord. And I'm glad, I'm glad it's not about us because you know how, how fickle we can be, but I'm thankful that we serve a God that never changes. Like he's the same uh, yesterday, today, and forevermore. I'm glad that the future of the church is not hinged upon humanity, uh, but God has solidified it uh, by the power of his resurrected Christ, and that's Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And so, look, Paul says, look, we preach not ourselves. It's, it's not about us. It's not about uh, how many we have on the roll. It's not about how well our choir sings or how well uh, the preacher preaches. No, the, the most important thing that we are attached to as believers of Jesus Christ is the gospel. And Paul says, I'm, I'm spending the rest of my days and the best of my days giving my time, energy, and sweat, blood, and tears towards the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe, brothers and sisters, that's what we ought to be busy doing. Uh, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I enjoy. As you know, I've been in church all my life, and I, I love the church. I love the church. I will always uh, be in somebody's church. And so, uh, but one thing I do know, uh, more important than any concert we may have, more important than any program we, we may have, the most important thing that we as a church can do is to understand a proper perspective on preaching and ministry and that it is not about us but it's about the lord it's about spreading the good news uh, to a world that is consumed with so much bad news it's reminding them that no matter how low you get uh, you can't go too low that god can't reach you because his blood uh, as the songwriter said it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows uh, to the lowest valley it is the blood of jesus christ that gives us strength uh, from day to day and it will never uh, lose its power and so uh, look it is a proper perspective on preaching and ministry and then paul doesn't stop there if you have your bibles open uh let's let's look at verse seven uh paul says in this way he says but we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power, watch this, it doesn't belong to us. Paul says this extraordinary power in verse seven belongs to God and does not come from us. Verse eight, we are afflicted in every way, but he says we're not crushed because of this extraordinary power. He says, look, we go through things. We have trials, we have tribulations, Look, there, there are some times that it, it gets overwhelming, but he says we are afflicted in every way or troubled on every side. But he says because of this extraordinary power, because of this treasure that we have in clay jars, he says we are not crushed. He says we're perplexed, but not driven to despair. We're persecuted, uh, but not forsaken, uh, struck down, uh, but not destroyed. He says, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. 
For while we live, he says, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. Let's not forget that. He says, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible, all right, in our mortal flesh. So he says in verse 12, so death is at work in us, but life uh, in you. I love, I love Paul's metaphor here. Uh, he compares us to clay jars, and he is talking about the treasure that we have, brothers and sisters, uh, that we have gleaned from the gospel of Jesus Christ before uh, becoming a part of the body of believers. We have access to extraordinary power. See, that's that's really some good news all of us can use. I know, I know we are in this pandemic and, and even before this pandemic, let's be honest, we were already dealing with some things. Uh, but the sober reality of the life of the believer is that although uh, the odds are stacked against us, we have a treasure on the inside of us uh, that says even when the world is against us, it's not more than God who is with us and walking with us, okay? We are always in the majority when it comes uh, to God. And so, so look, he says, he, we've got a treasure. We've got something on the inside of us uh, that, that helps us. This is treasure uh, for tough times. And, and let's be honest, we're dealing with some tough times. Uh, but the reason why you don't have to lose sleep at night and the reason why you don't have to pull out your hair or the reason why you don't have to be worried is because you've got something, brothers and sisters, on the inside of you. It is the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Because if Jesus Christ can overcome sin, death, and the grave, then surely he can overcome a pandemic or any storm that may come to our lives. See, that is why, that is why I've been telling everyone Look, we, we may have rain that falls in our lives, but the believer handles the rain differently than the world. We've got something on the inside. And from the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that extraordinary power that Paul is talking about, look, we've got peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh, we've got love uh, for the world and everyone we come in contact with. We've, we've got a resilience. We've got a a, a level of perseverance that has been given to us uh, from being connected uh, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, resurrection. Uh, because as one of my favorite song, uh, songs says, uh, because he lives, uh, we can face tomorrow, okay? And so although we don't know what tomorrow holds, we understand who holds tomorrow uh, in his hands. And he all, we also understand that God is leading us and guiding us and protecting us every step of the way. And so here, here's what I want to outline. I want to outline from verse, uh, from that verse seven, all the way down to verse 12, uh, as Paul talks about uh, this treasure that we have uh, in clay jars. This is what Paul is essentially saying. He's saying, look, uh, we go through things, uh, but things aren't really going through us. He says we have trial, uh, but trial is not taking over us. He's saying that we go through things, but we've got something on the inside of us that serves as a witness uh, that although things seem to be falling apart, we know that things are really falling into place. He says because of our relationship with God, although we go through these um, trials and tribulations, it serves as a great witness uh, to the world. OK, and so he says he says, don't don't miss that part. He says he wants uh, the world to know that Jesus is on the inside. Yes, we are troubled on every side. We we are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Watch what he says in verse 10, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible. In our lives, you we often say it often uh, uh, the, the things that we're going through. Uh, it, it's not just for us, but it's to give encouragement to somebody else. Uh, it's we're not going through these struggles and these storms and these various situations for ourselves. No, it is to bring glory to God and also to serve as a witness 
to other people that may not be in relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, look, this is what Paul is essentially saying. He is saying the power of God, the power of God is better seen through the lives of people that are susceptible to brokenness. Yeah, he, he calls us clay jars, all right? He calls us clay jars, okay? But he's letting us know about the fragile state of humanity. But how, because we have treasure, look, we can make it through these tough times. He says the power of God is better seen through the lives of people that are susceptible to brokenness. Uh, because if you were not able to be broken, if you never had to go through anything, you would not have a testimony. In fact, there, there are many of you on our, our, our conference call or even watching us on Facebook Live or on YouTube or even our website that it is the storms that you have been through that have brought you closer to God and have made you more of a witness to other people that may go through the same thing. Yeah, it's often said with, without a test, there's no testimony. Without going through some mess, there is no message to share. And so it is how we go through things and the fact that we can be broken that gives to us credibility when it comes uh, to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as you know, uh, Paul, Paul uses this metaphor um, uh, as he is looking around at his own region. In the historical context of Paul, uh, when if you were to go anywhere uh, in that Mediterranean region, uh, you will find on the ground, if you walk, you will find parts and, and particles of clay jars, all right? Uh, these clay jars were used uh, to store things. Uh, these clay jars uh, were used to uh, drink beverages. These clay jars uh, were used uh, for every almost every facet of life. Uh, but as you know, when you walk those roads, you see and find out how fragile uh, these clay jars really are. They can be broken. And let's be honest, all of us have been through some situations where we felt broken. All right, all of us. I don't care how religious you are. I don't care how, how spiritually mature you are. The sober reality of all of us is that we have gone through some things and it has broken us in some ways. But what Paul is saying that we don't have to worry about any of that. He said, we've got a treasure on the inside. We have a relationship with a God that will never leave us nor forsake us. We've got uh, someone that's always looking out uh, for our good. He says, we've got this treasure and what a great witness we become when we go through something. Look, it's, 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 it, it, it transitions from being what you heard about to now what you know for yourself. It transitions from being uh, just Big Mama's religion uh, to being your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, it is when we go through the trials or tragedies of this life that God is able to be strong even in the midst of our weakness. Yeah, even when we feel like there's no hope for tomorrow, we find a great hope in him. All right. And so he calls it uh, clay jars. And so uh, one of the things I was thinking about is that Paul makes this analogy or this metaphor, uh, but he uses it uh, for his time. All right. He uses it for his time. And so uh, I was I was uh, thinking about how uh, could I make it plain for us today? Uh, how can I really uh, show you uh, the privilege that we have? as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, the access we have uh, to this extraordinary power. Um, and so here, here's one thing I do want to lift up for you, uh, lest I forget. Um, when he talks about these clay jars, um, and, it, uh, we, we have to, and he talks about this treasure uh, that he had, we have on the inside, I don't want us to conf confuse this uh, because this is a spiritual uh, truth, all right? Uh, we, we can't afford to miss what Paul is really trying to say. Uh, he doesn't want us to confuse the container uh, with the contents, all right? He doesn't want us to confuse the container with the contents. This is what I mean. The container is not keeping the contents. No, it is the contents, Paul says, that is keeping the container. 
He says, look, we are the container. The truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the contents that we have on the inside. It is not like we understand in this life where it is the container that holds the contents. But no, we are a living witness that is what's on the inside that's keeping everything on the outside together. That's some good news, y'all. I'm, I'm shouting all by myself. It is what's on the inside of me that is taking care of everything that's on the outside of me. That's what Paul is saying. He says, don't confuse the contents with the container. It is not the container that's keeping the contents, but it's what's on the inside of the container that's holding everything together. The reason why you haven't fallen apart is because of what God has planted and placed on the inside of you. All right. And so I'm grateful for that. And so I, I was um, I was actually uh, getting, getting a drink of water and I got my my water bottle. And if you've ever had a water bottle, brothers and sisters, uh, you know that when you when you get that water bottle and you drink all of that water and many of you have done it. I know I do it. Uh, you get that empty bottle of water and you this is what you're able to. You're able to actually crush the bottle. All right. You can actually bend the bottle and crush it and, and shape it to how you want it. You can actually uh, take the air out of the bottle and, and, and you can crush it all the way down to fitting inside of the palm of your hand. All right. You're able to crush it. Watch this. The reason why you're able to crush an empty bottle is because there's no contents. Yeah, there, there's no treasure. There's nothing on the inside of it. And that's that's the life of those people that have an existence without God. That life is able to crush them down to seemingly nothing. But here's our shout tonight. That when you have a water bottle or when you have a life that is filled to the top with valuable contents. Look, I, I can't I can't bend a, a bottle that is full. I, I can't bend a bottle that's filled up to the top. I, I can't bend it as strong as I try to be. I cannot bend it because watch this. When you have something on the inside of you. Life cannot break you down to nothing. But watch this, because you've got something that's been strategically planted on the inside of you, you've got treasure for tough times. Yeah, you ought to tell somebody tonight, I've, I've got something on the inside of me. It's, it's not where I've gone to school. It's, it's, it's not how much money I have in my pocket. It's not the clothes that I have on. It's not my last name, but the reason why I'm able to overcome and deal with tough times is because of what is on the inside of me. And that's why I, I remember that, that old song. I don't, I don't hear it too often. They would often say uh, something on the inside working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. It's, it's that thing that's on the inside of us that keeps us, as he says, we may be troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. We're, we're, we're uh, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. It's because we've got contents on the inside of us. Uh, we've, we've got a God uh, that, that sits high and looks low. We've, we are connected to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've got peace that will blow your mind. We've got love inside of our hearts. We've got courage and commitment and compassion flowing on the inside of us. And that's how we're able to deal uh, with these tough times. That's what Paul is talking about. Thank God tonight. I, I want you to really thank God. You, if you don't thank God over anything else, you ought to thank God tonight that there's something on the inside of you that keeps you from getting stressed out. There's something on the inside of you that keeps you from falling apart. There's something on the inside of you that keeps you from breaking down. You have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And let me tell you this, parenthetically, when you have experienced that kind of dynamic, I, I know there's somebody on the phone or, or even watching us online uh, that can testify. When you go to a great restaurant, and I mean, they blow your mind and it's five-star service, and look, I mean, it, it was an amazing experience. You don't keep that to yourself. But no, if it's been good to you, you tell everybody. You call people and say, hey, girl, you ought to try this. Hey, hey brother, you, you ought to try this. That's how we ought to be when it comes to our faith, that we've got something so good that would change the trajectory of anyone's life. We've got something on the inside of us that would change families' futures. That would, that would turn people's lives upside down. And so that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Tell people about this treasure, all right? So Paul doesn't stop there. Paul doesn't stop there. Um, but Paul, Paul talks about 
uh, the proper perspective of preaching and ministry. He says, look, we're not in this thing for ourselves. No, it's about Christ. Uh, Paul has a, a very high Christology. Paul, uh, he preaches Christ and Christ crucified. And that is, is the total uh, essence of his preaching ministry. He's always talking about Jesus Christ. And so he gives us a proper perspective on preaching and ministry, but he also lets us know that the power of God is seen better in the lives of people uh, that are susceptible to brokenness. People that can be broken, like you and I, uh, have a greater witness. Because if you've never been through anything, and you've never been able, uh, never gone through anything that will break you, uh, you don't have credibility when it comes to your witness about Jesus Christ. All right? But lastly, uh, Paul, Paul, Paul lets us know something. I, I, I really value uh, this last part of, of chapter four. And I pray, I pray somebody's being blessed tonight. I, I just feel God's spirit uh, heavy on my heart tonight uh, because, uh, look, somebody needs to know that you've got treasure for tough times. Look, we don't know how things are going to work out with this pandemic, but we know that God promised to take care of us. He will give us provision. He will give us protection. He will give us peace that surpasses all understanding. We've got treasure, you all. And we got treasure on the inside of us so we won't be broken uh, and, and, and never be uh, beyond repair. Look, Paul says in verse 13, let's go there. Th verse 13. Um, but just as we have the same spirit of faith, uh, that is in, in accordance with scripture. He says, uh, he, he starts quoting uh, Psalm 116 verse 10. All right. He says, I believed and so I spoke. Uh, we also believe and so we speak uh, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus, here, here's our good news. The Lord, the one that raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Verse 15, yes, everything is for your sake so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Look, he's telling us, he's telling us, brothers and sisters, look, it's, we're not going through this uh, by accident. It's not an incident. Look, God is going to use this season of our lives in which we are being challenged like never before to bring glory to his name. Yeah, he's he's going to get the glory. And, and as you know, glory uh, in, in the scripture, all that is, is magnifying or putting a microscope on the goodness of of Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, look, when we come out of this, and even while we're going through this, look, brothers and sisters, because of the treasure that we have on the inside, there are going to be people that wonder, why aren't we stressing out? Why, why haven't we thrown in the towel? Why are we still loving? Why are we still serving and, and giving in the Lord's church? It is because that we've got something on the inside, and God is using even the pandemic to bring glory to his name. That's how good God is. He will bring glory to his name, especially in trying times. And so he says, look, it's, it's, it's so that glory would come to his name. And in verse 16, uh, he says, uh, and he says it, this is, this is where I landed uh, even this morning. He says, so we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Watch what Paul says. He says, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. You ought to stick a pin in that. Verse 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, you ought to stick a pin in that. He says, so we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. He says, for this uh, slight momentary affliction, he said it's temporary. It's preparing us. Hear me, child of God. It's preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary. All right? It's temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Paul, Paul gives to us what I really like to... To call, if you, you will give me uh, uh, some leverage here, I really want to call what Paul just said. 
as, uh, as being uh, what I call the paradox of the Prince of Peace. The paradox of the Prince of Peace. Uh, while we are falling apart on the outside as believers, and things are falling apart. I, I'm telling you, let me tell you, uh, even before this pandemic, you ought to be honest enough that the longer you live, things will fall apart. They will fall apart in your body. Uh, they will fall apart in your finances. Uh, they will fall apart in various uh, seasons of your lives in various ways. He says, even though that stuff on the outside is falling apart, because of the treasure for tough times, that we have on the inside of us, he says, we are being renewed. We are being revived. We are being restored. We are being redeemed. We are being regenerated. Watch this. Not every other day, but he says day by day, every day of your existence that you stay connected to our God. Although you may feel weak in your body, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, I've seen it time and time again that you are people are being renewed in their spirit day by day. Uh, let me tell you, faith that cannot be tested is not faith at all. We're going to go through trial. We're going to go through tribulation. But we've got something on the inside of us that allows us to overcome as well as persevere while we wait on God to do what God is going to do. Look, let me tell you, it's the paradox of the Prince of Peace. Because watch this, let's not miss this tonight. In common culture, life always leads to death. All right? In common culture, life always leads to death. But when you are in Christ, brothers and sisters, life does not lead to death, but death leads to life. Yeah, as we die to ourselves, we are on our way, not transitioning from death to life, but we're, 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 we're going to have life everlasting, all right? He's renewing us day by day. And that's why uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm praying just like you all uh, that this pandemic comes to, the, to an end. But at the same time, I'm praying that God's perfect will and work be done. I believe God is up to something. I believe uh, although things may be falling apart and we could look on the news and, and even and look at uh, our, our president and we never know what's going to come out of his mouth. And I, 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 it's so much going on, uh, even in our personal lives beyond the pandemic. But here's, here's our shout tonight. Here's our good news. Look, uh, it's not going to end in death. No, we, because of who we're connected to, we have life, and the Bible says he'll give us life more abundantly. Yeah, we, we have pain. We, we have trial. But we also have a God that has all power in his hands. And when he takes prerogative to deliver us, he that the Son sets free is free indeed. Um, I was watching, uh, as we close tonight, I was watching um, a, 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 a film. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but what I can tell you, is that the film was about um, uh, Mr. Rogers, all right? Uh, Mr. Rogers, and I was watching it uh, late Saturday night because I just needed to uh, get some positive distraction and uh, with so much going on. And so uh, I watched the movie and it was interesting. Uh, Mr. Rogers, a lot of people don't know, he was actually an ordained minister, uh, a seminary trained minister. And so uh, his show was actually uh, probably the most uh, successful children's ministry uh, that we've known in the history of humanity, all right? And so uh, I grew up, y'all, unashamedly, I grew up on Mr. Rogers. And all the puppets and, and you know, the sweaters and the sneakers. I, I love me some Mr. Rogers, you all. And so uh, as we're watching Mr. Rogers, I was watching the film, and Mr. Rogers, in the scene, he went to visit someone uh, that was on their deathbed. Yeah, he went to visit someone that was on their deathbed. And the interesting thing about the scene is that he walks up to the person that's on their deathbed and he whispers to them. He says something to them and finally uh, someone asks them what did he say to the man that was on his deathbed. And here's what Mr. Rogers says. He says, I whispered to him and I asked him to pray for me. I said, what? The question was, why would someone that is seemingly well ask someone 
that's on their deathbed to pray for them. And he said, the reason why I asked that man on his deathbed to pray for me is because someone that is going through something like that must be close to God. Yeah, that's, he said, someone that is dealing with a storm like that must be close to God. Someone that is dealing with a trial like that has no choice but to draw near and nigh to God. And that is our existence, that as we deal with these perilous times, as we go from day to day and we have to wear a mask and have to cover up and stay in the house and there are other situations, unemployment is going on, there, there are tragedies everywhere, people are, are still going through various trials and tests, but here's the good news. It is sometimes God uses times like these to pull us closer to him. Sometimes God interrupts our program in order to pull us back into his will and his way. And my prayer, my prayer tonight, as we even uh, reflect upon these words of Paul, look, I, I'm, I'm not gonna complain about suffering. I'm not gonna complain about trial. I'm not gonna murmur about this pandemic. I want God's perfect work to be done in my life. I want the love of Jesus the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus to be seen clearly in my life. I don't have a testimony without a test. I don't have a shout without having some suffering. I'm going to go through this and I'm going to handle it with Christian class, knowing that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Look, I want to be closer to God in this season than I've ever been in my entire life. And that's my prayer for you all as well, that we draw closer to him and that we be reminded that although uh, we may not be able to change things, although we may not know how things are totally going to turn out, here's the good news. Brothers and sisters, you can be encouraged and you can sleep at night knowing that there's something that when you became saved, there's something that God planted on the inside of you. It is what I call treasure for tough times. And so, look, walk on, children. Keep your head up high, as, as the old church used to say. Don't you get weary. God is going to work it out for us. And so that's, that's what he is encouraging us to know, that we've got treasure on the inside and to know uh, that God will never leave us nor forsake us. And so as we pray tonight, I'm praying for each and everybody uh, that's on this call, each and everybody uh, that is uh, viewing us on our website uh, I want you to take some time and reread uh, this chapter. Uh, it's letting us know, yeah, we, we go through things, uh, but because of what's on the inside, uh, things don't go through us. So let's pray. God, we say thank you. Uh, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness. And God, we just thank you that we've got something on the inside of us. We thank you uh, that we've got this treasure uh, that, that's on the inside of us, a treasure for tough times a treasure that, that gives us the strength that we need and also the courage that we need and the peace that we so desire. And so God, we're just asking as we move forward in this life uh, that we know that the treasure is not in the cars that we drive, the treasure is not in the clothes that we have on, the treasure is not the houses that we live in, but the ultimate treasure, the most valuable piece of treasure that we have is our relationship with Jesus Christ. So Lord, encourage each and every one that was a part of our Bible study tonight uh, give them what they need. And also, we just thank you for the privilege of prayer and the opportunity uh, to study your word together. We love you. And God, we lift you. Uh, in Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you all. God bless you all. Uh, we, are, we are signing off uh, from uh, Facebook Live. I want to encourage you all to stay on uh, on the prayer call. Uh, we start in a few moments.